Hi, this is Born in 62. I'm Henrik Jørs. Today will not be about neither physical training or mental training, but about the Danish concept of hygge. Hygge is trending right now in the UK and somewhat in the US. And uh, winter is here and uh, in a few moments Christmas will be upon us. So it's also the season for hygge. It's quite nice to feel hygge, but what is it really? Well, I'm going to talk about it right now, trying to explain it, but really hygge is very elusive to most people. And right now, when it's interesting, a lot of people out, is out there to sell you hygge. Apparently, from the books I've seen, from the products people are trying to sell you, hygge requires you to have multicolored socks and a fireplace. Well, uh, I, in my life, have lots of hygge and I have never ever owned a pair of multicolored socks. So, I like a fireplace as much as the next person, but actually you can feel hygge in pretty poor surroundings. So, to look at hygge, it's not a matter of buying any product, it's a state of mind. It's just like cozy, really, and uh, we have to find out what is the premise, the conditions that you need to make hygge. First off, let's look at the Danish word hygge. The Danish word is both a verb and it's also uh, a state, a condition, really. So, in the verbal form, I can say something like Jeg hygger mig, which means I am hugging myself. It's an active action. I do. I'm actually doing something. But it can also be a, a, just a state of mind. I'll say, this is cozy. Det er hyggeligt. <laughs> and uh, uh, also, uh, I can, can uh, say that a certain place, a living room or a fireplace for that matter, is hyggeligt. It's cozy. So the word can be used in a lot of ways, but uh, to really understand it, we must look at what you do and not the surroundings of the place. It's worth noticing that you can feel hygge all by yourself. You can just hygge you, uh, being home alone one evening or one day, or you can do it in the presence of others. But what is essential is that everybody present feels safe. If we look at Maslow's model, it's apparent that the second level has to be fulfilled. If some of those present, yourself or us, don't feel safe, it could be from physical attacks, but it could also just be from conflict, fear, anger, some kind of grudge towards some of the others that are there, Hygge will never emerge. No fireplace, no marshmallows, whatever, will help Hygge come to a place where people are in an unsafe, unsure, conflict state of mind. So we have to have this level fulfilled. That's a must for Hygge. Also, the first level, the physical needs, have to be fulfilled up to a point. You can sit down with friends and have it cozy, have hygge. If you're a little bit hungry, you haven't had all that sleep you need or so on, you can ignore that for a moment or two. But in the end, this will press on, this will take away your focus from the present and you will begin to wonder how can I get something to eat, I have to leave, I have to do something, I have to sleep. I'm not feeling comfortable because these physical needs are pressing on and I need to do something. So the conclusion is that Hygge have very meager conditions if the lower levels of Maslow's model isn't fulfilled. Also from that came a third conclusion and that is the present. You have to be here, you have to be focusing on the present, you have to be just here and nowhere else. If you have your mind filled with plans, purpose, missions, agendas, something you want to do, 
Well, you can't be here now, so it's almost like a kind of mindfulness. You have to be at the present right now. So we can conclude that the absence of will, of plans, of missions is a requirement for Hugo. That means that if there's a group of persons together, family, friends, whatever, and we are having a cozy time together, we are here to talk, sit down, do something together, maybe make food, maybe make something else, maybe just sit around talking. If some of the persons have something they want from this, it will destroy Hugo because Along the way, the other piece and per persons will, will feel this. Uh, let's say that uh, some of them don't like each other. This kind of hidden conflict. You can feel it, even if they don't talk to each other. You can always also feel that. If one of the persons are secretly in love with one of the other persons, that will give that person, person a mission uh, something they want to do, something they want to accomplish, maybe they want to impress the other person. And at least one of the persons, at least that guy or girl with, with that secret love, will be unable to really feel the hygge. If I'm alone, it's the same thing. I can put all the good stuff together around me. I can light up a fireplace. I can make hot cocoa. I can put on Mozart or whatever makes me feel good. And Hugo will await me if my head is full, uh, filled with negative thoughts. If the day that's been is going around like a film, like a merry-go-round, and the same bad stuff keep coming up and up and up. Maybe someone was not uh, being polite to me, was angry with me, something like that. And I'll repeat it over and over and over and it will destroy my ability to sit down and have peace of mind. The same is if I worry about what will happen tomorrow, uh, if I fear tomorrow, if I have fears about something, that will destroy my ability to feel hygge. So, one of the requirements, one of the conditions we must have to feel hygge is that, uh, that's another cat, uh, is that we have peace of mind. So we now know that uh, the two first levels of Maslow must be fulfilled and we know that we must drop any kind of plan, any kind of demand on, our, on ourselves for today. We must simply say that I have done what I should do today and now I'll sit down and relax. If I still have this little inner voice telling me that I have to do something more, that I have a plan that I should execute. Well, then Hugo will await me. If we look at one of my hobby horses, this model about the three zones, we can surely say that Hugo lives in the comfort zone. You have to feel secure, you have to be rid of any kind of purpose, any will, any plan for today. You have to be able to relax, have peace of mind no negative source. A lot of good stuff ha is happening in the learning zone. But in the learning zone you have will, you have plans, you have something you want to accomplish. And therefore Hugo have very, very meager uh, conditions in the learning zone. Sometimes you can be in the learning zone with other people and at the point where you feel feel that you have fulfilled the need there, that you have accomplished what you want to do. Afterwards, you can say, whew, that was that, and you can sit back and relax, but then you are actually going back into the comfort zone, and uh, being in the comfort zone is a requirement for Hugo. So we are getting nearer what Hugo really is, but have not just stated the obvious, have not just told you what cozy is, a condition that everybody knows. Well, if there's more to it, I hope I can tell you about that too. Why is it that Danish hygge is so special? Is it any different from what other people would call cozy? Well, I think there is some traits that are special and uh, 
looking at yourself and your own people from the outside is always hard because I really honest I don't know but I'll give you my take on Danish Google. First off we're good to set it up spontaneously. We don't need to pre-arrange things and say tomorrow night we will have Hugo and there's fireplace and multicolored socks. It just happens. I think there's a, a lot of different traits in that. One of them is that we don't take ourselves very seriously. Danish humor is uh, dreaded and also liked, but uh, mostly of about uh, I think we self like it because um, we can make fun of everything. Uh, there's nothing that is uh, political correct about Danish humor. We can make fun of a lot of stuff, including ourselves. We are uh, not very concerned about what other people think about us. And when you're not concerned about that, you're not using energy on being afraid of not being correct, of not being good enough, and so on. It's not to say that Danes don't have the same negative source that other people have around the globe. Am I good enough? Do I perform well? And so on. But I think this special trait that we can laugh a lot about ourselves and we don't take our own lives and abilities too serious is a good way to start to relax. Also, I think we have uh, a very old culture. Uh, Denmark has been a democracy for many years and uh, there has been equality between men and women, uh, between rich and poor and so on for a long time. Not entirely. Uh, there are still differences, there are still rich people and, and uh, poor people and so on, a lot of differences on different ways, but the process, the process of creating equality has been going on for a very long while and therefore we have uh, kind of taken it to us that we have to live together in a good way, we have to have a society that is uh, relaxed that is mature, uh, freedom of speech, freedom of everything, democracy, will give you that kind of peace. This is a very secure society. We don't fear of being uh, attacked violently every day. It's not uh, something we do here. Uh, we did that uh, a couple of hundred years ago, but we have evolved, we have moved on. Uh, most Danish people don't own any weapon, we feel secure without them. And uh, from childhood we are used to kind of hygge. You can visit your grand, uh, grandparents and there will be hygge. You can visit other people and there will be hygge. And in your own home there will be hygge. So it's kind of our soul really. And the last trait I will mention is that the winters here are cold and dark and long. So you have to stay indoors and if a family, a group of people have to stay under the same roof for a long time, you must be able to have a cozy atmosphere between you. You must be able to let go and relax because if someone always is destroying that by aggression, fear, whatever, uh, nervousness, that would be very, very bad. So, uh, while Hugo is not uh, holy in any way, uh, destroying it is considered a very rude and bad thing. So, I think the Danish Hugo is built up through many years. So, what can you do to feel it? this? You can set it up, of course. You can buy multicolored socks or whatever product they're trying to, to give you. But, in the end, fireplaces and marshmallows and multicolored socks won't help. First of all, if you want to hug by yourself, you have to clear your mind of any kind of plans, schemes, negative thoughts and whatever. If you want to do it together with other people, maybe you have to talk to them about what you want so you don't have different expectations. And if you say to your one of your loved ones, well, shouldn't we sit down this evening and have it really cozy? And then they expect you to have warm cocoa, a fireplace and everything else, and you just expect to sit in front of the TV and eat popcorn. 
that is also a hygge, if the status mind is right. So the real difficult part is to rid your mind of negative thoughts. And I'll address that in coming videos. Until then, I hope Hugo will be with you. Hi. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs>